direct object versus indirect object. He gave the letter to her. So which noun or pronoun is the direct object? The letter. So he is our subject noun or pronoun. Right, it's a subject pronoun because it's he. Gave is the verb. Right, gotta have a verb in every sentence. You know, um, every grammatically correct sentence as opposed to dialogue. I think we've, I mentioned this. Uh, you know, you, you can technically say go or run or come uh, or stop, you know, and that sentence, you know, can make sense. But it's, it's normally considered dialogue. Um, generally, a grammatically correct sentence is going to have at least two words. A noun or pronoun, which is the subject noun or subject pronoun, and then the verb and punctuation. That's so at minimum it's two words. So he gave the letter to her. So the letter is a direct object, right? Because he, he gave the letter to her. Now, um, to her would, uh, so her is not considered indir an indirect object in this sentence because the phrase to her is considered a prepositional phrase. It's not considered an indirect object. An indirect object is actually a lot more quote unquote direct in terms of the wording of the sentence or the phrase. So on the right side of this, we're seeing subject plus verb plus indirect object plus direct object. So those chauffeurs, the subject, told, verb or verb phrase, them, that's the indirect object, right? It didn't say told to them. It just said told them a funny joke, right? The direct object, because it, uh, what was told was a funny joke. So a uh, funny joke is the direct object. But the indirect object is them, told them a funny joke. It'll make hopefully more sense as we go along. Um, but yeah, you know, we'll, we'll find opportunities to have examples and, and whatnot uh, as well as we move along. Uh, adjectives, an adjective describes or modifies a noun or pronoun. Remember, an adjective is a word that helps the reader visualize any attributes of the noun. So it, and it could be using your five, sentence, your five senses, right? So it is smelly, right? Smelly is an adjective. It is silly. Silly is an adjective. Silly describes it. It is funny. It is wonderful. It So wonderful is an adjective, right? It is spectacular. Spectacular is an adjective. It is big. It is you know, three-legged, right? If there's like a little creature running around the ocean floor, and it is three-legged. Three-legged is a, an adjective, right? Um, I like three sports. So the number three is not, it, it can be a noun, right? So I like the number three, period. So the number three could be a noun phrase or three could be the noun, could be a noun in that sentence. It just depends on how you want to define it. Um, and But here, three is an adjective, right? I like three sports. So three describes or modifies sports. Same thing with the word, with a color. So red or blue or white. So I like the color blue, period. Well, the color blue could be a noun phrase or just the color blue. So blue, the word blue in that sentence could be considered a noun. However, if you say, I like your blue shirt, period, in that case, blue is an adjective because blue describes or modifies shirt. So the key is how that word is being used in the sentence. And so you're not always looking for the fact that every word can only be used in one way or as one part of speech. No, it depends on how that word is being used in the sentence. So in this sentence, I like three sports. Three is an adjective because three describes sports. 
Uh, John Knowles, A Separate Piece, great book. I think it's sort of a classic. Uh, I read it, I believe, when I was 16, 13, I don't know, somewhere around there. It's been a while. Um, but I remember that I really liked it. It was about one particular event in these teenagers' lives, and uh, it was it was a profound um, event that affected their, their lives. Um, and I remember I was really, I was really uh, uh, affected by the book. I thought it was really solid. Um, I didn't like it more than I liked, say, Where the Red Fern Grows. Uh, I didn't like it more than The Great Gatsby, which I read later on in high school. But I remember I did like it. And um, and I've seen it on on lists of uh, books that uh, adolescents should read. Um, so I think it's considered a, a sort of modernish classic. But anyways, he possessed an extra vigor, a heightened confidence in himself, a serene capacity for affection, which saved him. So this is a quote in that book. Extra is an adjective describing vigor. Heightened is an adjective describing confidence. And serene or calm is an adjective uh, modifying or describing capacity. So th all three of those are adjectives. And I think going over this earlier, but are articles adjectives? And the answer is yes. Right, so the home or a home right the book or a book anything that helps the reader or the listener paint a clearer picture or you know see a less fuzzy picture of exactly what quote unquote it is or quote unquote they are um is an adjective so a book is different from the book the book means it's the book either it's the only book or it's the book that we've been talking about earlier so it implies like kind of a dialogue between two or more parties um and you're talking about a specific book so that allows you, allows the reader or listener to crystallize that if you say a book grab a book from the shelf it implies that there are a whole bunch of books there are many more than one book on the shelf so just grab any any book essentially grab a book from the shelf you know so because that helps with the specificity of exactly what's going on and what the reader or the listener perceives uh, about book, um, you know, a and the, which are articles, are 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 uh, also adjectives. So they they help describe the attributes of that book. Um, so. Hopefully that helps. So A, N, and the are articles, but they're also adjectives. Now adverbs are a little bit different, obviously. These are all parts of speech. An adverb describes or modifies a verb, an adjective, or another adverb, phrase, or clause. So adverbs, the ones that describe verbs, often end in L-Y. As we see here on the right, she focused carefully on the instructions, period. So carefully modifies focused. So carefully is an adverb that modifies a verb, focused. They quickly ate their lunch before running back outside to play, period. Quickly is an adverb that modifies ate, which is the verb in this sentence. Adverbs tell how, when, and where. So down here, it sleeps now. So now modifies sleeps, right? It modifies that verb there uh, in the sentence. So adverb can describe or modify a verb, an adjective, like right here. They have a very large backyard. Now, very doesn't describe or modify a backyard because you can't have a very backyard. You can't cross out large and have a very backyard. So what is this describe or modify? Well, it's very large. So it's describing or modifying an adjective, because large is an adjective, which describes backyard. So very is an adverb that modifies or describes the adjective large. 
in this sentence. Um, or another adverb, phrase, or clause. Now, right here, he runs fast. Fast is an adverb that modifies runs. So hopefully this is helpful and you got a little bit out of this and it's not too confusing and uh, we'll keep plugging away. Thank you very much.